Hey guys, what's good? Uh, so to follow up from the last video I did on painting light and shadow, uh, in this video I'm just going to explain in a bit more detail some of the steps we took last time. Uh, so this is, what we, this is what we did in the last video, so let's just go over quickly uh, the steps that we took in the last video to create these. So we started off with mapping out the light and shadow, and then we did the half turns. So. And then after that, we did the cast shadows. Uh, and then we did the occlusion shadows. Uh, and then something in the last video that I briefly talked about was highlights. And I said that I'd talk about it more in this video. So let's just put that down as well. Oh yeah, we also did bounce light as well. I forgot to put that in. All right, so that six things that we went over last time that I will try and uh, go a little more in detail and explain why they happen and explain like some different kind of uh, situations I guess. So starting off with the light and shadow, uh, let's just draw another quick um, circle, not even draw a circle, just kind of make one. So let's uh, again say that the light's coming from the top right corner again. Alright, cool. And I'll just do another example of a square. So, pretty self-explanatory with light and shadow. It's just all dependent on the angle of the surface in relation to the light. So when light's hitting a surface, then it's going to be in light. And when it's not hitting a surface, it's going to be in shadow. So in this example here, all of the sides would be in light. Using red for the light side can't actually uh, draw uh, a, a circle here and all of these sides would be in shadow bam easy simple right nothing complicated about that uh, apart from my inability to draw there we go so that's a pretty simple pretty simple example then this example here let's say the lights coming from the top on this square now in this instance what would happen to the the faces on the side here, right? Because they're going at the same angle as the light source. Uh, if you think about it, if the light's coming at the same angle, it would actually just pass by uh, the surface, so it wouldn't actually hit that. So that these sides here would actually still be in shadow. So in this example here, all of these sides would be in shadow, like that, and this would be in light. So yeah, if um if the surface is facing 90 degrees or more away from the light source 90 degrees away from the light source and it actually uh, starts to become shadow so if you're wondering like maybe in this situation whether it would be in light or shadow it would be in shadow if it's uh more than 90 degrees towards the light source then it is being hit by the light and if it's 90 degrees or more away from the light source then it's in shadow so uh yeah, let's uh, I'll just write that down. So that's pretty simple, that's the light and shadow. So we did half turns next, so half turns is a little bit more complicated uh, as far as the explanation goes. Okay, so for half turns we said that as the, as the surface starts to move or angle away from the, the light source, it will start to get darker until it reaches the shadow area of the object when the faces start to face away from the light source. So here, uh, even though these surfaces are still being hit by uh, the light source, when as the uh, angle of the surface starts to move away from the direction of the light source, it will begin to get darker. So I'm going to use purple to label the half tones. So like that, right? So all of these here are half tones. So why does this happen? That is the question. So the surfaces start to become darker as they angle away from the light. So you will begin to use the darker values uh, until you reach the shadow, the shadow line. So let's draw two examples here. We'll draw one like this, where the surface angle is perpendicular to the direction of the light. So this, this uh, gray line is the surface and these, the red lines, are the direction of the light, right? 
and I'll just copy this over and we'll do another example over here where the angle of the surface is more facing away uh, from a light source like this, right? So on this first example, what we've got is we've got this area of light here and it's coming down and it's hitting this area of the surface, right? So when we go over to here, uh, we've got this area of light and it's hitting this surface at an angle. So you can see that on the first example that it's having to light up a lot less surface area and it's all with the same amount of light. So obviously if, um, if it's having to light more of the of a surface area with the same intensity of light, it's going to have to spread that light out, and it's going to appear darker. Uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Uh, so moving on to, I believe, bounce light next is what we did. I mean, cast shadows. Sorry. So cast shadows are when there's an object in the way of the light, and it blocks the light and forms a cast shadow. Uh, within the area of light that is blocking. So we'll write that down as well. Doing a lot of writing here. Uh, so in this example here, where the the light source comes from this angle, the light hits here, it stops, and obviously then there's no light to go beyond that, and it leaves a cast shadow on the ground. So uh, let's draw a ground quickly in grey. Uh, so you can actually figure out where the cast shadow should go if you want to by extending extending the light down to the the next available object, which in this case is the floor. You can actually tell that the car shadow in this case would be here when it hits the floor. Uh, even if there was like a wall here, you can still do the same thing like that. Uh, I think I said this in the last video, but it's kind of difficult or more unnecessary to uh, figure out exactly where all of the car shadows should go. So it's probably better uh, in the interest of time to just make an, a, a good guess as to where you think it would be. And if you get it roughly correct, then it's believable enough. Uh, but just for the purpose of demonstration in this video, I just wanted to kind of show that. Uh, and that's pretty much what there is in terms of car shadow, uh, not really anything uh, particularly difficult. Uh, so moving on to bounce light. So we said last time that bounce light uh, in this case hits the wall and bounces onto the other side of the object. So um, once again uh, I'm actually going to duplicate the same example over because it's just that good. So bounce light, uh, if we draw a wall like we did in the previous demonstration. Uh, bounce light is essentially reflected light So light hits the surface and it reflects uh, away from the surface. So in this case here, the light would uh, come down, hit this uh, wall and reflect off and it would cast light uh, onto this side of the object. Okay, so in the last video, I don't think I uh, explained bounce light a lot or very well. So I'll just go into a bit more detail in this video. Um, so bounce light usually depends on the, uh, the material of the surface that the light's being reflected off of. So we'll do two examples here. So in this example here, I will do like a wall. Just imagine this is like a wall, or just any painted wall that you might find in your house. Quite a rough surface. So the light comes down and uh, hits this surface like this. And what, what actually happens is some of the light gets absorbed uh, into the object, into the surface. And uh, some of the light bounces off this surface and it'll actually bounce off of this specific surface in a number of different directions uh, and that's why usually bounce light is less intense than the main light because uh, the other part of the light is getting absorbed into the, the, the object. Um, so the reason why the light bounces off in like all of these different directions in this example if you zoom in to the surface on like a microscopic level in this example we're saying it's quite a rough surface like a wall uh, the surface texture is actually not even uh, so in this case when the light hits it actually won't uh, reflect off evenly the light might come from here it might hit like this bump here and reflect off at this angle uh, another ray of light might be hitting this surface hitting this bump and then like, reflecting off at this angle. Another ray of light might be coming down like this, hitting this surface and 
bouncing off at this angle like that and that's that's why uh, it bounces off in a number of different directions uh, so you can actually kind of think of some forms of bounce light or most forms of bounce light like this as their own independent light source essentially that's one example uh, if we go to another example so let's say we've got a different surface and we'll say this is a mirror this time in this case the light will come down it will hit the surface and this will actually bounce off a lot more of the light in the same direction so uh, the light will actually bounce off at the same angle uh, and this is because if you zoom in to this surface it's actually a lot more smooth than for example this over here which is a bit wibbly wobbly so it actually bounces off more a lot more of the light uh, in the same direction like this and uh, in the case of a mirror it actually reflects more of the light if not all of the light so um, the light source actually doesn't get less intense it's more intense than this which is why when you look in the mirror uh, you can just see reflection of everything you can't actually really discern what color a mirror is because it's reflecting all of the light away from it so these are the main two examples obviously as you might get something in between this as the surface gets more smooth the angle of the light it's reflecting gets more consistent and the amount of light it reflects increases so the intensity of the bounce light is higher as the surface gets smoother as well but yeah that's pretty much bounce light i'll just clean this up a bit before i continue uh so next we'll get into occlusion shadows before getting into highlights uh, so occlusion shadows are pretty much areas where light uh cannot reach or life struggles to reach. So let's say we have a floor underneath this. Occlusion shadows are basically like these areas, these very tight spaces where the light won't reach. Uh, so the reason why this happens is if we imagine this angle like this. Uh, so if we imagine the lights coming in like this, uh, using the uh, the demonstrations of bounce light as to when bounce light occurs, it, it'll get darker because uh, some of the light gets absorbed. So what's happening here is the light's coming uh, down like this, hitting this uh, surface. It bounces up here, it gets dimmer, and again the same thing happens here. So it will hit this surface, it will come down like this, and again get dimmer, and then it'll just keep going like that every time getting dimmer. So um, with that. Obviously, as the bounce light comes in from here, it gets dimmer. This surface starts to appear darker and it keeps going. The light source is getting dimmer each time it reflects until eventually no light actually manages to reach like, these areas. So these will appear in complete shadow. And that is what creates an occlusion shadow. Yeah, so moving on to highlights, uh, finally, or almost finally, there's one other thing that I want to go over. But one of the last things is highlights. I didn't really go over this a lot in the last video because I said I'd go over it in this video, which I will. Uh, so highlights, basically where the light, source is being, the light source is being reflected off of the object. Uh, let me just write this down. Uh, so when you think about reflections, you actually have to think about where the camera is or where the viewer is. Uh, so let's say in this example that the camera is here, right? I'll try and draw a camera. Cool, that, that's a camera. So if we imagine that that is the camera uh, viewing this object from this angle, you actually have to figure out where the point of reflection is on this object in relation to the camera and the light source. So the light source is here. You have to figure out where on this object the light source will hit and be reflected into the camera. So this is where you have to um, start figuring out angles and stuff. So it might actually be somewhere around here. So here the light the light source comes down like this. It reflects off of um, this surface angle in particular. And it, this bit of light actually goes directly into the camera. And that is where your light source would be. The reason lights uh, highlights are more difficult, uh, highlights will actually change depending on uh, the angle of the camera. Uh, the light and the shadow stays the same regardless of where you look at it, but the highlight will change because it's dependent on where the the viewer's eye is or the camera is. So let's do another example where the camera's like more, the camera's a bit lower 
at a different angle like here. So you have to figure out the angle again, where on this object the light will reflect directly into the camera. So it might be somewhere around here. And you can see it changes every time the camera moves. Uh, we'll do another example like over here, just one last time. So again, you have to figure out that angle. You can see um, with all of these examples, as the camera moves around, the, the reflection changes location. And that's, uh, that's why reflections or highlights you have to kind of think a bit more differently. Right, so uh, the highlights also can also change depending on the, the material of the object. And I'm actually going to grab this example that we did in the last video. Uh, so in this example, if I was to draw a highlight on this object, I'd probably put it somewhere around like here. Uh, obviously the viewing angle in uh, this is like where you're actually looking at it from in this picture. So it's basically just the whole frame. But yeah, I'd put the highlight somewhere around here. Uh, so this is like a fully reflective highlight. So this is, this is implying that this uh, surface is quite glossy or reflective and in this case you'd actually want to try and start putting reflections of like the surroundings on it but I'll just leave it like that for now uh, just for the sake of demonstration so if we want to do like a more portray a, a, a matte surface right in this case the highlight actually becomes a lot more diffuse and a lot less bright so less intense so in this case uh, the highlight would actually start to diffuse outwards and it wouldn't be nearly as bright as uh, the other example on the left. So as you do like something like this, I'll just kind of diffuse it outwards. Something like that, there's still a highlight there, but it's uh, being diffused outwards more. So this is kind of implying that the surface is uh, a more matte surface. So um, in this example, if we go back to the example of bounce light here, where if you've got a more uh, a rough surface, a more matte surface, the light will actually reflect off at different angles and it will reflect off uh, with a less intensity. That's the same principle here, where the highlight is a lot dimmer than this example on the left, and it's diffusing outwards because the light's being reflected off in a number of different angles. Uh, this example here is more like this here, with a, a more smooth reflective surface where the highlight's coming down. Uh, it's pretty much all reflecting in the same angle uh, towards the camera and it's a lot brighter because it's reflecting more of the light. In general, there's usually reflection on pretty much everything that exists. It's just that some highlights or reflections you can't see because they're just so diffused that they're not really that noticeable. And in those cases, you don't really, you just don't bother drawing them. So yeah, that's highlights. Again, uh, I'd say just take a guess as to where you think the highlight would be. Just save yourself some time, but don't bother calculating the exact angles of everything. So there's one other thing that I actually wanted to go over, and that is types of light. Uh, this is the last thing uh, for this video. So I'm just going to go over two different types of light, two of the main, the main types of light. Right, so uh, as far as this goes, there's two main types of light, and that is sunlight and point lights. Uh, and all of these examples, I've been using sunlight because it's just the easiest to demonstrate and the easiest to think about. These are the two main types of light that I tend to think about. So with sunlight, uh, you see how I've, when I did these demonstrations, I did all of the light sources parallel to each other, like the light rays like this. And this is what happens with sunlight. So all of the light sources will be parallel to each other like this. And in a point light, for example, like a light bulb, the light source, so this is sunlight. Let's draw a little sun here. Uh, the point light, I'll draw a light bulb. Very nice. So this is a light bulb. A point light, uh, the light rays actually go uh, outwards from the light source like this. And the, the light intensity will decrease the further out it gets. So the light will get weaker as it, as it gets further away from the, the light source, right? So in this example of a point light, let's say I was to draw a circle or an object close to the light source. And I was to draw one like really far away from the light source at this angle. Obviously, um, in these cases, the light would hit the object at different angles. So this object would be hit by light from like this angle. This object would be hit by light from this angle, right? And uh, the one that's f further away would actually be getting less light than the one that's closer because the light is obviously getting less intense as it, move, as it moves away from the, the light source. So this is sunlight on the left and this is point light on the right. So you might ask like why sunlight is different. It's just another source of light. It should be the same thing. 
It actually is. It's just that it happens on such a large scale that it's so unnoticeable to us that it might as well just all be going in parallel lines. So when you think about the sun in relation to the earth on that kind of scale, I'll do a quick diagram because I've done so many of those already in this video. Uh, this is space. Uh, this is the sun here. Okay. Actually, space needs to be darker than that. Space is very, very dark. So space, that, that's space. Uh, this is the sun here. And this is the earth. Obviously, the earth is way smaller than the sun. And I don't know how far away it is. Like, this far away, for sure. Uh, so with this, if you imagine this is a point light, uh, the sun's obviously giving off light around it like this. And the amount of that light that's actually hitting our planet is like this much, right? And at this point, in this scale, when you think about it, all of these light rays might as well just be parallel at this point. It's just because it's on such a massive scale in relation to us that it's just easier to think of it as parallel light. And obviously uh, the, uh, the sun it gives off a lot more light than like a light bulb. So it's gonna be a lot brighter. And at this point, obviously on this scale, you might as well just think of it all as the same intensity of light. So yeah, that's pretty much why these two differentiate from each other. So yeah. That's pretty much it for this video, I suppose. Uh, just went in and explained a bunch of stuff. So yeah, I do hope this helps. Uh, I hope it made sense. I hope I didn't explain everything like garbage. So yeah, that, that uh, pretty much does it for this video. Just a lot of theory stuff, I guess. I don't really think I'll need to do anything like this in the future for what I've got planned. But if you do want me to do something like this in the future on a different topic, then uh, let me know in the comments. And yeah, if you liked the video, then uh, leave a like, uh, subscribe and all that jazz. Uh, if you've got any suggestions in as to future videos, stuff that you want me to cover, then let me know and I'll try and get on it. If you've got any questions as well, let me know. I'll try and get back to those. And yeah, I'll uh, see you in the next video. Peace.